Hi everyone. Thanks a lot for watching this video on CyberArk PAM integration with AWS SDS service to provide just-in-time access to the privileged users. So without further ado, let me kickstart my presentation. So this is the brief agenda I have put together. First point, we are going to discuss why organizations should leverage upon CyberArk SDS plugin over other IAM plugins. The second use case or second scenario we are going to discuss about the workflows, how the workflow is going to look like between the PAM and on the AWS SDS side. The last but not the least, I have put together three different use cases for the demonstration section as well. So let's see why organizations should leverage upon CyberArk SDS plugin. The beauty of using this SDS plugin over the other IAM plugin is that you don't have to create multiple accounts on AWS site at all. Okay. Another advantage is, as we all know, it's never a good idea to use permanent credentials. And if attackers get hold of such credentials, then they can pretty much own your entire infrastructure, considering the permissions attached to this entity. So in the STS plugin, we will be leveraging upon the temporary credential for connecting it to the AWS console. Last but not the least, so within the CyberArk, so with the help of the session policy, we can even provide a granular uh, permissions to the cloud administrator, okay? With the help of the session policy and the same policy being has been mapped to the CyberArk, we call it a AWS policy. With the help of this specific uh, configuration parameter, we can help you to, to, uh, to limit the entire cloud administrator permissions as well for a given session. Again, if you want to watch or if you want to learn more about the session policy, feel free to watch my other video. I'll put the link in the description. So this is the first workflow. So how does the how does the entire integration gonna look like between CyberArk and the AWS side? On the CyberArk PAM, so what we have to do, we have to create two privilege accounts. The first one is called so-called login account, where we will be onboarding the AWS access key and the secret access key. And with the help of these keys, we will be communicating to the AWS. The second account, we call it a role map account or STS role account. In this account, we will be configuring a bunch of parameters like AWS account number, uh, role ARN, and couple of other parameters. I'll be showing you during my demonstration time. Here in this entire workflow, if you see, the first step is the request is gonna get forwarded to the AWS STS. We are gonna say, hey, I'm, I wanna assume a role admin and from the AWS side in the step number two, the temporary credentials shall be sent over. In the step number three, so what we will be doing, we will be using those temporary cred credentials to connect to the AWS console, okay? And the good part uh, within the CyberArk is that the entire session, whatever user is doing on the AWS console, everything is going to get recorded using the CyberArk jump host. So this is the first workflow. <clears throat> the second workflow is with the session policy. With the help of the session policy, the only difference is, uh, only difference from the previous one is, in the step number one, apart from sending a Zoom role with a role admin, so we will be sending a session policy as well. So with the help of the session policy, what's gonna happen behind the scenes, user will be granted a limited amount of permissions, what he or she requires to perform their uh, uh, daily or day-to-day -day tasks. So now come on to the interesting part, the demonstration. So there are three different use cases. The first use case is very simple. So Claudia shall be using the full SDS administrator role account. But as you know, as it is privileged, so she has to get some additional approvals to use this specific account. 
The second use case, for the second use case, like if Claudia wants to perform a very specific task, for example, in this case, easy to administrative task. So she will be using another privilege account. In the, in the another privilege account, so what's going to happen, she will be granted a limited amount of a permissions only. So here on the Cybrox side, so you will see we will be making use of AWS session policies. The third one is for a non-privileged task, if user Claudia, she, she want to perform a read operations only. Okay, for such kind of a, such kind of a activities, she can leverage upon another account. But for this kind of account, as it is, it's more like a non-privileged kind of activity, she may not have to seek any kind of additional approvals at all. I think that's pretty much about it. Again, I have put together a GitHub page. Uh, so using my GitHub page, you will be able to follow the step-by-step -step how to make use of STS plugin, how the configuration is gonna look like on AWS side, as well as on CyberArk side. So let me show you the GitHub page. So th this is my GitHub page for this uh, CyberArk STS plugin integration with the AWS. So if you follow this particular guide, you, you will be able to configure all the settings what's required on the AWS, as well as what needs to be done on the CyberArk side. I'll, I'll paste this uh, GitHub page link into the description of this particular video. So let's jump onto the demonstration. For this demonstration, so what I'm doing, I'm going to the Cybrac web console. Okay, in Cybrac, we call it a PV, PVWA. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to log in as a cloud administrator, Claudia. So for these three different use cases, so let's see on the first use case, okay? So here, let me search on some of the accounts we will be focusing upon. We will be focusing upon these four different accounts. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we have to use one of the login account. Okay, this is the login account what I have created on the AWS side. So where you have to onboard your access key and the secret access key. And with the help of this login account only, we will be interacting with the AWS side. Apart from that, I've created three different STS accounts, okay? For the first demonstration, let's take an example, a user Claudia. She wants to perform XYZ task on the AWS side. So what's gonna happen? So I have created a, another account. If I click on the details, so you are able to see the safe platform. You are able to see the username. You, you can configure any username, whatever you want. You are able to see the account number, role, ARN. Apart from that, one of the most important thing uh, you should understand here, I have associated the previous created login account here because, so whenever I'm trying to perform any actions on this particular account, so we will be using this login account to interact with the AWS, okay? So here, so what's gonna happen because it's a privilege account, so Claudia doesn't have any permissions to simply go and access this particular account. What she can do, she can simply uh, request for an approval. She is gonna say, hey, need to perform demonstration. And she can specify the time frame. She can specify the time frame. For example, uh, let's and then she can mention the whether she needs a single access or a multiple access and then she can simply send a request okay so request has been sent across to the to the authorities so what's gonna happen so i'm going to log in as a mike so mike mike uh, can can uh, accept or uh, Mike can accept or reject the request. What Mike is gonna do, Mike is gonna go to the incoming request. Mike is gonna go here. Mike is gonna see, hey, what Claudia is saying. 
Claudia is saying, hey, she want to perform a demonstration. She is requested on this. I can see the time frame and so on. So for this particular request looks to be legit. So what Mike is going to do, Mike is simply going to confirm the request. I'm going to say, hey, approved. And once the request has, in, has been approved, so what we can do, we can go back to the Claudius console and you are able to see, hey, everything looks okay. The request has been confirmed. So what we can do to access this specific account, before we access this particular account, I want to show you. If I click on a show, you are able to see, hey, there are no password involved at all. So what we can do, I will click on a connect button and here you can mention the session duration as well. Okay, so I'm just going to click on connect and then we will double click this RDP file. You are able to see, we will be able to connect to the AWS console via the cyber app jump host. And here you are able to see your entire session is going to get recorded. So here you are able to see we are on the Ohio and then and you are able to see this the Raj STS administrator role and Claudia is assuming this specific role. Let's go to the S3 bucket, for example. So once we go to the S3 bucket, you are able to see all these S3 buckets as, as, as well. So what we can do, I will simply go to the EC2 administrator. Let's go to the instances. So if I deselect this running option, you are able to see I do have all the permissions. And for this particular example, let's try to launch one of the EC2 instance. So here we are going to launch a one of the EC2 instance. We are going to say review and launch, launch. I'm going to acknowledge it and you are able to see, hey, I'm able to launch an EC2 instance. Okay. Let's terminate this EC2 instance, for example. So we are able to terminate the EC2 instances as well. So let's try performing some other action. I'll go to the IAM and you are able to see, I'm able to see how many users are there, how many customer managed policies and so on and so on. So that's what concludes the use case demonstration number one. For the use case demonstration number two, in this particular case, for example, Claudia knows that she wants to perform just a EC2 administrative task only. So what's gonna happen behind the scenes from the Vault admin perspective, whoever has onboarded this specific account, what he's going to do if we go to the details, so you are able to see most of the detail remains the same, even the role ARN. The only difference is, so in the AWS policy, it corresponds to the AWS session policy, we are sending a specific thing. We are saying, saying, hey, for this particular session, user wants to assume just a EC2 administrative uh, permissions only, nothing else, and that's it. As it is also a privilege uh, account, and, uh, uh, and so for this particular account as well, so Claudia might have to seek an additional approval need to spin off EC2 instance, for example. So here also she is going to mention the time frame. So she is going to say, hey, she want to perform this task from so and so day. And she is going to say multiple access required. Now the request has signed, a uh, request has been sent to the approver. And if I go to the incoming request, I think we have to refresh this page. You are able to see request has been, has uh, come to Mike. And Mike is gonna say, hey, Claudia wants to perform this particular action. This is the time frame, So it looks legit. She's gonna confirm this request. So now we will go back to the Claudia's uh, console. And uh, Claudia, uh, here Claudia can see request has been approved. For this particular task, what we are going to do, we are going to simply click on a connect button, similar to the use case number one, I'll dub, double click, and in a matter of seconds, you will be able to see 
if Claudia is able to communicate to the AWS console and this entire session is going to get recorded. First, as Claudia has been given the EC2 administrative per permissions, let's see, let's try to spin up one of the virtual machine and see whether Claudia has all the permissions or not. So here we can see Claudia is able to spin off uh, the virtual machine, no issues at all. Let's try to delete this instance at all to check whether Claudia has got all the permissions or not. So here also we can see the Claudia has all the permissions from the EC2 administrative perspective. Let's go to the S3 bucket. So once we go to the S3 bucket, so here you can see Claudia don't have any permissions at all. If I go to the IAM, so here also you are able to see Claudia don't have any permissions at all. But one thing to take note, Claudia is assuming the same role in use case number two as the use case number one. There are no changes in that. So this is the beauty of the AWS session policy. So that's what concludes the use case number two demonstration. For the use case number three is, let's take an example. Uh, Claudia wants to access or wants to wants to have read access only onto the onto the EC2. For this particular use case, also what we are going to do, we are leveraging upon the same uh, same settings except the AWS policy, which correspond to the session policy. So here we are going to say, so Claudia should be given only the very least amount of privileges, which is the read permissions only. So that's the only thing. And for this particular case, right, as it seems to be, uh, Claudia is not looking for excessive permissions, so he may not need to seek any kind of additional approvals at all she should be able to access this specific account. So here also, I'm simply gonna click on a connect button. There's no approvals required in this case. I will double click and in a matter of second, you are able to see I'm able to go to the EC2 console. Once I'm able to go to the EC2 console, you can see it note here, I'm assuming the same role as before. If I'm able to, if I wanna launch a new EC2 instance, so let's see whether I'm able to do that or not. Launch. So here you are see, you can see uh, Claudia is unauthorized to perform this particular action. So let's see whether Claudia can still list down all the EC2 instances or not. So if I deselect this running option, you are able to see Claudia is able to see all these EC2 instances. So let's try going to the IAM. So let's see whether Claudia has any kind of a permissions at all. So here also we can see Claudia doesn't have any permissions at all. So that's what concludes our use case number three. I think that's it from my side. Uh, thanks a lot for watching this video.